What is going on, miners? Jump Change XD here. Hope you're all staying healthy, having a great day. Today's the day we're going to be doing a little bit of upgrading inside this trailer. I have this uh, switchable PDU that I actually just got off eBay for 90 bucks. I think this is like a P5 uh, Chatsworth. I guess PDU it's a switchable PDU I can uh, access it directly through the dashboard from my phone or whatever as long as I get into my ubiquity system I can actually access this thing so it's awesome because I want to be able to shut off things without having to walk out here every single time it's like kind of crappy out you know what I mean it just makes way more sense if I'm running things off solar to be able to have something manageable directly from my phone then on top of that PDU switch that we're going to be testing out I did get a, another server rack that I actually just built and I threw it right here in the middle for the time being as you can see it's the same exact one as the one right here on the right so what I'm going to do is Take this one, slam it against the left wall here. We're going to remove these two racks, get all the KS zeros disassembled and kind of get them inside this rack nice and neat, kind of like this, right? Similar to this. So what I'm going to end up doing is actually taking these shelves off. There's one here, there's one here, one here, and one here. I'm actually going to use these box miners or put these box miners on these jazz miners and just have those act as a shelf because... These are off anyways, to be honest, so it's not like they're running or anything and they're not going to be transferring heat to each other. So I'm going to have that guy acting as a shelf and then this guy acting as a shelf and then probably use the PDU as the third shelf instead of this jazz miner because the jazz miner here, I actually have some fans cut into the top. I actually did a DIY video on that. If you guys haven't seen it, go check it out. I'll leave a link here, but this is, uh, yeah, going to be awesome. I can't wait to do this. So First things first, I want to test the PDU because the PDU is the biggest thing that I need to make sure it works. If that works properly, then I don't have to return it or uh, put in a claim on eBay. So let's get this thing plugged in. We're going to reset the unit. I guess I'm supposed to hold in this reset button for like, I don't know, 10 seconds or whatever it is to get this thing reset so I can actually have it uh, produce a brand new IP address to go to my ubiquity so it doesn't get lost somehow in the system or locked somehow So let's uh, let me cut the zip tie. Let's get this thing plugged in make sure this thing has power over here first Pretty sure I still have this thing on. Yeah, that's from grid So I have that powered up So that's where we're gonna plug it in just to test it out for the time being and then we'll swap it out with uh, That guy right there. That's completely off solar at some point So I really hope there's no issues with this because for $90. I think it was 95. I actually Offered him 90 and it was like six bucks or something after tax it was like five dollars and change So we'll just say 96 right 96 bucks for this thing. This is like a $700 PDU, which is insane So I will leave the link if anybody's interested down in the uh, pinned comment below But I don't know if uh, it's still available. Anyways. All right, let's uh, I guess Here goes nothing plug it in and hopefully nothing happens. It's all lighting up Hell yeah all right, so I assume that means we're good, but is that screen supposed to be on? All right, so we got a orange light. Does that mean, why is it, it looks like it says critical. Does that mean critical or is that warning? All right, so I just arrived with the paper clip that I was gonna use to hit the reset button and this PDU fired up. Everything's blue, no more warning. That was weird, maybe it just needed time to boot up or whatever, but we're gonna try to hit this reset button right now and see if this does anything hopefully it does i'm just gonna hold it in for like 10 seconds maybe i just want to make sure that i can get an ip address on this thing because if it gets locked out then i know i'm screwed oh i just heard like a fan is there a fan in this thing there is a fan in this thing i just heard it spin up oh and it's flashing again okay so that's good, I guess. I would assume that's good. All right, so I just plugged her in. I'm gonna give it a little bit of time to get that white light back up there, or the uh, LCD screen, rather, to illuminate. Once that does, then I'll run inside. We'll check it out, and uh, we'll come back out here with the results. All right, so I found the IP, and I actually brought my laptop out here. I'm here, and I thought the username and password would be admin admin, and it's not, so... <laughs> I don't know how to find it. I'm gonna have to email the guy, I think, and figure that out. Let me try a few more things. Let me see if I can get into it. And uh, yeah, I mean, I guess that's all we can do. Let's go from there. It actually has a sick menu feature that I can kind of just scroll through and it says restore to defaults on the PDU settings. Ooh, network only, configure only, user only, restore all or reset device. 
Okay, so about a half hour later, we got it situated, I got into the GUI, and I can actually manage every one of these switches, which I'll show you guys in just a second, but this guy right here had to be reset inside the uh, display here, and then I had to go back in and turn on the DCHP setting on the... Uh, internet right because it wasn't showing up in my ubiquity system so this screen flipped and i don't know how to flip it back around so let's lay this down so i could just show you guys all right so what i had to do was first things first go to the wrench here i had to go down to the pdu settings which is here then we had to go down to restore defaults then i went and restored the config only then I had to get back into this section and go down and do the user only. And I actually ended up doing restore all and reset the device. I actually did reset the device first, but then I did a restore all user and then config. So I did it all in the opposite order, as I said, but that is, uh, the, the steps basically that I took, I don't think I had to do the reset device. I just did restore all was a definite, uh, something I had to do to get into the system because I needed to clear all their shit, right? Then I had to get the user only stuff and the config stuff just for safety measures, I assume, because I don't know if it was covered in the restore all, whatever. I don't know how to use this. I'm just trying to figure it out. So anyways, that ended up seeming to work. So that's a good thing, right? Then I had to, let me show you guys real quick in the, um, other section here. Hold on. going to keep canceling this in the IPV4. So now I'm blocking some of the other stuff, but on the IPv4 setup, I had to put yes on the DHCP. Because if I didn't do that, then it was not registering in the computer or at my Ubiquity system. So yeah, that's that. But anyways, we got all this stuff ready to go. So just for shits, let me show you guys how this works. Let's go to... Uh, the outlets here, right? We're on the outlet section, outlet tab, right? Administrations here. Then we can choose what we want to shut off. So I'll do one, three, five, seven, nine. And then we'll just scroll down and I'll click the off button and we'll watch these things just start changing in front of our eyes. That's it. One, three, five, seven, Nine all have orange lights, which means they're all shut off. So this switching PDU works flawlessly. And I'll be able to control this entirely from my phone when I'm mining on solar, like on shitty days like it is today, right? Not getting a lot of sunlight. And I know my batteries aren't fully charged around this time. I don't have to run out here and unplug things and get things situated. I could just be like on my phone and bing, hit port one, shut it off and call it a day. And then obviously you can see now it shows on the uh, outlets right here, off, on, off, on. You know, those are the ones obviously I turned off. I could just choose them back and we can turn them back on. And that's it. Hit the on button and they literally all just click back on. Dude, this thing's sick. All right, let's get this thing set up on the other side there. Let's start disassembling this. And let's get this over there. So a day later and a lot of man hours later, we finally got everything situated. I got all my Casper KS0 miners on this brand new rack with those adjustable uh, shelves there, the ones that I could just put wherever I want on the server rack. I didn't buy more. I ended up just utilizing my jazz miners as shelves for the units that are actually off for the time being because those shelves are like 50 bucks a piece. So I'm not gonna buy any more of those. I have four of them. I figure four is enough for the time being here, but my Jazz Miner X4 one use holding all my iPolos. I have the mini doges and the SC box on the Jazz Miner X16Q and the X4Q. To be honest, these would be perfectly fine sitting like this forever. I really don't need to get more shelves because these units have fans and they cool straight through the back. They actually are not like heat sink designs like this. Like these sitting on top of a metal rack will make the metal rack actually warmer than it needs to be but if you guys could see underneath this unit they have holes all the way through to cool perfectly so i don't have to worry about anything there the fans that are underneath pushing up are cooling these units nicely and they're all honestly working great um the pdu i mounted over here as you guys could see i have a whole bunch of stuff wired into it i actually have the top three wires coming over here for my jazz miners i don't have them on right now but they are plugged in. I just wanted to get them nice and neat across the ground. 
So I have the ethernet coming in from the actual house, right, going into the network switch. Then I have the blue one coming out and going over to a second network switch that I actually am just going to use for everything that needs to be hardwired. So all the KS0s, again, they don't have Wi-Fi. So I have all those being plugged right into that. And again, it's working flawlessly. The only thing that stinks is I can't see any of the stuff plugged into this in my ubiquity setup but i really don't need to because i have all the ips so i'm not really too worried about that i can get in the dashboards whenever i need to uh this ks0 pro has been giving me shit dropping off the network for whatever reason i don't fully understand why but that's why i have this one on the ground i'm kind of monitoring it i'm actually waiting on a new cable from the veteran miner if you guys are interested in that go use code ccxd you guys can get some uh of these cables 10 percent off of them with that code but these cables are fantastic and that's one of the older style plastic ones as you guys might be able to tell i know there was some issues with those when people were overclocking these units so he actually did a new style and it's way better than it used to be sorry if that would focus but yeah i can't wait until those cables come in probably i, I think like three days or something he usually ships them out and uh they come in pretty quick which is nice i got my ao box 2 down here that thing is running solely off wi-fi i have the psu for that directly underneath the shelf here that's a 1200 watt psu p2 psu actually from evga that thing can uh supply more power to any of these mini box miners if I need it to at a later date. So that's why I kind of stuffed that under there. I can always add another one too if I needed to. These uh, PDUs are not being used, they're just kind of here. I was debating whether to plug in some power draw stuff to this guy and just kind of put it somewhere, but for now, we're just gonna leave that there. I'll, I'll figure that out at a later date. I'd like to monitor each rack, but it's kind of hard with all the individual plugs back there, you know? Um, and then the Doge 3 Plus is right here. That's just off for the time being. I was waiting for uh, the sun to come out, and obviously it has at this point. It was really crappy this morning, but the sun's actually breaking through nice and there's really no more clouds in the sky. We had like a 50% chance of rain today. So it's nice that it's not, but I'm super pumped about this. I love the uniformness of this trailer now. It, honestly, it eases my OCD to be real, but and it does make things a lot easier and neater for me to work on things and find things. Obviously I could get some more shelves and throw them on the backside here because there's plenty of room for a another rack kind of like this. So if I ever get more miners or more KS zeros, the ultras or something, I can obviously stick them in there and this rack could be loaded up way more. But this PDU was a freaking steal and probably the best part of me doing this entire video here and uh, this entire overhaul. I did end up going on eBay and ordering another one just because I know you guys are gonna buy them all out, but I will leave a link to this in the pinned comment down below if you guys are interested. I got that for 90 bucks. I think he has it listed for 99. I offered him 80, he countered at 90 and uh, that's where we landed. But man, being able to monitor that thing completely from my phone is insane. If you guys have a ubiquity system, that is the only real way you're gonna be able to monitor this from your phone unless you have Wi-Fi and you're on the same network. But me having a ubiquity, I'm able to get into the browser on my phone and it works out perfectly. So if you guys have any questions about it, obviously feel free to ask, but we're gonna have another one right there. And when I expand my solar setup at some point, I'll have two 30 amp plugs and I won't just have this single one. So I don't wanna be kicking myself in the ass later, but we're pulling 1300 watts as of right now. And that means this thing is still giving me some shit. Yep, it's nice and cool, yeah. Like I said, this one, I don't know what it is. This one always gives me shit. It's blinking red and green. They don't know why. I'm going to have to unplug that and mess with it, but it's having a problem with the IP. You know what? I plugged that thing back in. Now we're back at 1430 again. I got to monitor that. I don't know what the hell's going on, but this guy, I forgot to mention, I rigged a light up in here, which is awesome because I was working in here late last night and that was a pain in the ass not having a light in here. So I got this thing running off solar, pulls about 73 watts or so and uh yeah it, it it does its job right it does exactly what i needed to do be able to see in here at night anyways guys listen appreciate y'all for watching i hope you guys have a fantastic day i will catch you on the next one peace out